Alexa, how many days until February 24th? February 24th, 2020 is in 60 days. It is the day after Christmas, and as you just heard, there are 60 days until February 24th, and Certpocalypse is over. The new Cisco certifications are going to be here. That includes the Cisco DevNet, which I'm definitely going to take. But here's the thing. There's no textbook out there for it right now, is there? There's no practice exams. So you're kind of on your own to figure out how you're going to study for this thing. So here's my method of studying for this exam that will hopefully lead to my success. I believe it will. Step one is I have to motivate myself. I have to inspire myself. And Eric Thomas is a motivational speaker who has one speech in particular that really fires me up. I always listen to it before I start any exam because it's what helps me commit. And a link to that video is gonna be below. So step number one is committing. How bad do you want to pass this exam? How bad? Do you only kinda of wanna pass this exam or do you wanna pass it bad? If you wanna pass it bad, you're maybe willing to give something up in order to get it. Think about that. If you hit five o'clock and you mentally check out at five o'clock and you go home and you watch TV or you play games and then you go to bed, right? But if you really, really wanna pass it, especially without an official textbook or practice exams, you're really gonna have to commit to passing this exam. So staying committed, staying motivated through the process is going to be critical because if you wanna be successful, if you wanna get that cert, if you wanna get that acronym after your name, you're gonna to have to want it bad. So I'm committed, I wanna get it bad. I'm gonna do what it takes in order to get this certification. I'm gonna grind, I'm gonna hustle, I've got 60 days, let's go. Step two, I know this one kinda of seems obvious for me, but that's gonna be watch the CBT Nuggets. My exam passing methods is always start by watching videos, learn the basics, learn the core fundamentals, fill in the gaps later. And for me, watching video training, CBT Nuggets has always been my method long before I worked there. Now I did try other competitors, it wasn't for me, nothing against them, but CBT Nuggets is where I felt I needed to do my video training. Let's check out the course on CBT Nuggets. So I'm logged into CBT Nuggets right now, and right at the top, I'm gonna search for DevNet. The results come up, and right there in the top is the playlist for the Cisco DevNet Associate. Here's the thing, y'all. This playlist is meant to be in order. You need to understand what APIs are before we interact with APIs. You need to understand how a REST API call actually exists and how it works, how Python programming control flow works, how JSON is structured. You need to understand those things before you jump to the parts that you really care about. So the way this works, this course was designed is it follows the exam blueprint. Ben Finkel takes you through the software development fundamentals. He shows you how to work with JSON, how to work with XML, how to work with YAML. He shows you what an API really means and how you actually work with it. It's gonna be critical to understand that before you try and interact with a Nexus's REST API, for instance. And once you've gone through those portions, you'll see right around here, Network Programmability and Automation Foundations, that's when my stuff takes over. And we're now talking about what even network automation means. Why does it matter? It goes into how you can prepare your lab environment, which is going to be a critical step. We're gonna talk about that after the CBT Nuggets portion, and how you can follow along with the stuff that I'm doing. Now, Yang is really important when it comes to NetConf and RESTConf. You can't go into those without understanding what a Yang data model is. But after that, after RESTConf, Yang models kind of get abandoned because what really ends up happening is these network services like Nexus, Meraki, ACI, they have their own APIs. They don't use any industry standard stuff, which then would use you know, data modeling. So it goes through all of the different Cisco platforms. Let me throw this disclaimer out there too. I took it a step further than necessary to prepare for the Cisco DevNet Associate exam. For instance, the Cisco DevNet Associate exam talks about just being familiar with the Cisco collaboration platforms. The actual bullet point is describe the Cisco collaboration platform and its programmability capabilities. It doesn't actually tell you that you need to understand or write a Python script to connect to those devices and interact with them programmatically. They just want you to know about the, the platform at a very high level. 
I didn't feel like that was justified. I wanted to actually demo what an interaction with these devices would be like. So when you see a nugget like Cisco Collaboration Platform in the modern era, that's that describe bullet point. But then it goes into automating CUCM and UDS. And then it takes it a step further and there's an entire skill on just automating WebEx Teams, which is part of that collaboration platform. So if I actually bring up the exam blueprint, you can see what I'm talking about here. Under point three, Cisco platforms and development, if I expand this down, all of these are describe the capabilities, describe the capabilities, describe the capabilities. Uh, only a couple of these are construct code or construct a Python script, and those are involving Meraki, DNA, ACI, SD-WAN, or NSO. There's also WebEx Teams. You notice there wasn't anything in there about CUCM or Firepower or UCS, and I do demo how to interact with those devices. They also want you to understand the concepts of Yang, ResConf, and NetConf, and describe the APIs of iOS, XE, and NXOS, and I spend a lot of time actually programming against those devices. So just to reiterate, uh, expect that when you go through the CBT Nuggets course, a lot of that stuff is going to go above and beyond this exam blueprint just because I felt it was important that you actually see what network automation in action against these devices would actually be like. Now, if we continue down past bullet point three, it goes into DevOps and CICD practices, as well as understanding things like how to interact with Bash and Linux. Um, and again, another example of where we went a little bit beyond was understand the basics of Docker. I felt it was really important that you actually see Docker in action, what a container really is. So we take a Flask API, just pre-built code, and turn it into a Docker container and then publish it to the Docker Hub. That way you can see how easy it is to take an application like an API and make it portable in Docker. That's the entire point of Docker after all. So if we look at the exam blueprint, they're telling you things like just interpret the contents of a Docker file and utilize Docker images in a local Docker environment. I took it a step further than that and actually showed you how we can use Docker to containerize our own applications in one skill. Infrastructure and automation is where we're gonna introduce Ansible a huge part to the CICD pipeline and actually making sure that our entire network meets its desired state. And then we end the course with Keith Barker's Network Fundamentals. What better person to learn Network Fundamentals from than Keith Barker? He's who I learned my Network Fundamentals from. So yeah, I mean, this is a really big course. There's a whole lot of content in it and it does go a little bit beyond the exam blueprint because I felt it was really important to see this stuff in action so that it drills those concepts home. But are watching videos simply enough to pass the DevNet exam? Definitely not. The next thing I would say that you should probably consider doing is filling in gaps by reading books. Here's the books that I read when I was getting prepared for learning network automation in general. First up, Automate the Boring Stuff with Python 2nd Edition. 2nd Edition just came out in November of 2019, so it's brand spanking new, and it's all about Python 3, which Python 3 is really fancy and great. Uh, I definitely recommend if you're totally new to Python, this is the starting point for you because it's practical uses of Python. It's not what I'm gonna say is pretentious uses of Python. They just wanna show you how to make code that works. It's not necessarily the prettiest code that works. And here's the thing, guys. At the end of the day, no consumer ever bought an app because the code underneath the hood was pretty. As long as it works, that's all people care about. So automate the boring stuff with Python is how you are going to go from point A to point B. I have a video here on YouTube called how much Python do you really need to know in order to prepare for the DevNet Associate? I'd recommend watching that, but the gist of it is, is by chapter six or so, you're probably ready to rock and roll. Next up, I loved this book for understanding why network automation is even a thing, Network Programmability and Automation, first edition here. Uh, this book was great. It really sets the base level foundation, as well as introduces skills with Bash and Python uh, and it's vendor neutral, shows you how to work with JSON and XML. Great book for getting started if you want to read about network automation. From there, I think it makes sense to move into mastering Python networking. Again, vendor neutral. This book provides examples of Cisco, Junos, Arista, and even shows you other platforms for, say, building visualizations or building your own API. Uh, this definitely takes it up a notch. It's beyond the beginner level, but I would say it's solidly intermediate. If you've gone through the CBT Nuggets course and you've read a book or two, you'll be able to handle this book just fine at that point. 
Then the Cisco specific stuff. Now this is specific to data center and campus. This is going to be highly focused on Nexus, ACI, and APIC EM. And it is very, very technical. But it's written by names of people that you might recognize, like Jason Gooley. And I definitely feel like it was helping me understand the data center components of what's going to be on the DevNet exam. Now, lastly, there is a book on Yang. It's a very large and very technical book on Yang. I think this would go way beyond what you need in the DevNet Associate exam. Uh, honestly, if you read like chapter one and two, you're probably fine. But I did buy this book. I did skim through it and thought it was pretty interesting. But really, the books that I would say is make sure you understand Python. Uh, make sure you understand why network automation matters and the basics to get started with it. And there are some cool tidbits that you could pull out of mastering Python networking and the Cisco specific network automation textbook. So at this point, you're committed, you've bought in, you've committed to taking this test, you've committed to passing this test. We've gone through a lot of CBT nuggets to understand the fundamentals of everything that's going to be on the exam. We've got some textbooks covered under our belt. What do you do next? You lab. Labbing is the most important thing to studying, guys. Just lab as much as you can and get real world experience because this test is going to throw things at you that you're going to have to have problem solving abilities. Things that you've learned along the way by only labbing. It's the only way that you can learn how to solve these kinds of problems is by labbing this stuff. So how do you lab? Well, I actually have a skill in the DevNet about this. Back on the CBT Nuggets page, we'll scroll way on up here. Let's keep going, 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 going. Right here, prepare a DevNet study environment. There's a bunch of different ways that you can build your lab. Viral is one of them if you've got an environment or a computer or a server that can support an Enviral environment, but it is very complicated to get Viral working for DevNet. Viral by itself is great for something like CCNA, CCMP, or CCIE. But when you get into DevNet, now we're making things a little bit more complicated, making a developer machine access these virtual machines. Uh, and that's why I created a nugget, an 11 minute nugget on how to set up Viral. But the DevNet sandbox is really going to be where you spend your time. Cisco, because they know that Nexus devices and ACI and Catalyst devices, uh, they're expensive for the individual to learn this. They created these always on devices, these always on sandboxes where you can create your scripts on your local machine and hit these over the public internet. Again, the skill in CBT Nuggets covers how to interact with the DevNet sandbox and almost all of these skills that come after this, like ACI, like DNA Center, like Meraki, all of those things were accessing this over the DevNet sandbox. So when you're following along with the nuggets, you can actually leverage this DevNet sandbox, these always on sandboxes, and build your own labs. Where this really comes into play, if you click on the Cisco DNA Center, for example, here in the DevNet sandbox, you can scroll down and build your own scripts to test things out in your own environment. But further, you can always click on this learn more, and it will take you to further learning labs and use cases where you can follow along and push your skills a little bit further. So sum this thing up. You've got committing to doing this, right? We're gonna devote free time and energy to studying for passing this exam. And that goes for any exam. We're not taking no for an answer here. We want it bad. We wanna win, we wanna get that certification. So we're committed, we're in. The next step is watch the CBT Nuggets. We're gonna learn this stuff step by step with Ben, Keith, and myself. Get those core fundamentals down. Make sure that we really understand how APIs work and how Cisco and each of their different platforms handle their own API connectivities and interfaces. We've got a list of textbooks where we can fill in gaps, make sure we really understand somebody else's perspective on how network automation is changing the landscape and how we can interact with different kinds of devices. And then lastly, lab. Lab this thing up. Build as many scripts as you can possibly build. It's the DevNet sandbox. You can't break it. If you do break it, you can just tweet at Cisco DevNet and ask them to reset it or post in the forums. Hey, I broke the sandbox somehow. Can you please reset it? They will periodically reset these devices and get them back up and running for you. And they're always expanding the sandbox too to make it even better. Or you buy your own network equipment and viral and use those in your own environment too. If you break something in viral, you just tear it down and rebuild it. So those are the steps that you can take to pass the Cisco DevNet exam in 2020. All right, thanks for stopping by y'all. I'll see you in the next one.